Hi everyone, Mr. Missouri here. Today I'm going to show you how to balance a chemical equation. So, let's start with why we balance chemical equations. What I have here is an example of a chemical equation that uh, is in the notes for today's lesson. It's a reaction between magnesium and oxygen to make magnesium oxide. What I've done below that is draw a circle model representing each of the molecules we have before and after the reaction. So before the reaction, right, we have a magnesium atom, that's Mg, and we have oxygen atoms which always come in pairs, right? That's what that subscript there means. And then after the reaction, we have magnesium oxide, and using what we learned in unit 10, you can show that magnesium oxide has a formula MgO. Well, if you look at the circle model, you might notice a small problem. There's a missing oxygen atom. Before the reaction, we have two oxygen atoms, but afterwards there's only one. Well, the problem is you can't just have an atom disappear, right? Uh, one of the things you've learned about in this unit is the law of conservation of mass. What that means is that the total mass of what you start with changes into or is equal to the total mass of what you have after the reaction. Chemical reactions don't create atoms and they don't destroy atoms. They simply rearrange them. So however many atoms of each kind you have before the reaction must be the same as you have afterwards. So you can't have more oxygen atoms at the end than you do at the beginning. And in this case, we can't start with more than you have, right? That It looks like it's missing an oxygen atom and that couldn't have disappeared into thin air, could it? Okay, that was bad. But um, how you fix this, you notice I've left blanks in this chemical equation for where the coefficient should go. In order to balance a chemical equation, what you need to do is basically you need to figure out the coefficients. You can copy each of these molecules until you find a, a combination that works. And then you can fill on the coefficients. Let me show you what I mean. So a good way to start when you have a, an equation like this, you notice I didn't put the states of matter. You don't need them. The only thing you need to pay attention to is, is making an accurate circle model. And then below the arrow, I like to make a line that separates our before and our afterwards. So here's what our circle model looks like at the beginning. What, it, what you should do to, make, to balance a chemical equation is make a list of each element you have in this equation. So I've got magnesium and I've got oxygen. Now let's start with the magnesium. I have one atom before, one atom afterwards. Check, it's all good. Oxygen is not though. I have two oxygen atoms beforehand, but only one afterwards. Now to fix this, the rule is I can't change any of the molecules. I can only duplicate ones that are already there. So to add another oxygen atom to this side, I can't just draw an oxygen atom. I have to duplicate the entire molecule. So I'm gonna make an entire another molecule of MgO. Now that I do that, I have a total of two oxygen atoms here and a total of two oxygen atoms here. So now our oxygen atoms check out. Now the one last part, and this is a very important step, is to double check your work. Because sometimes when you fix one element, it messes up another one that you've already seen. So now that I've checked the oxygen, let's go back over and you say, oh, when we fix our oxygen, we mess up the magnesium atoms. Well, I've got one here, but afterwards there's a total of two. You can't just make magnesium atoms appear out of nowhere. So in order to fix this, I need to duplicate something on the side. Well, because magnesium starts as a single atom, I can duplicate that single atom. And so now we've got two magnesium atoms before and two magnesium atoms afterwards. Check. And oxygen, got two before, two afterwards. Check. So that's what you do. You duplicate whatever molecules you have and balance each element until they all check out. And then when you're done, you count them out and you put in the coefficients. So for magnesium, I've got two atoms of that. So our coefficient is a big two. For oxygen, now we have to be careful. I have to count how many sets of O2 I have. There are two oxygen atoms, but there's only one set of O2. So I'm gonna write in a one. 
Now, normally in chemical reactions or chemical equations, we don't write in the ones because they're understood. But on the homework for these, I want you to put in the ones just so that I know that you know that they're ones. Otherwise, if you leave a blank, I don't know if you think it's a one or if you just have no idea what you're talking about. And finally, at the end, we've got two molecules of MgO. So our coefficients would be two, one, and two. That's an example of balancing a chemical equation. Let's go ahead and try another example. So here's another chemical equation. Once again, you notice the, I've only, I've left off the states of matter. I've only put the formulas for the compounds and blank spots for the coefficients, just like your homework. The first step would be to um, draw a circle model of everything you have before and after the reaction. And, and once again, I like to leave a line to separate our befores from our afters. So in this chemical equation, we have two elements, sodium and oxygen. Now, before the reaction, we have two sodium atoms, and afterwards, we have only one. Well, you can't have an atom disappear, so how do you fix it? We duplicate the single sodium atom. Again, if it's a single atom, you can duplicate it. So, now our sodiums check out. Let's go to oxygen. Now, on this side, we have one oxygen atom, and in this side, we have two. Well, that doesn't work. So to fix the oxygen, we duplicate this molecule over here. Again, you can't just write on oxygen. You have to duplicate the entire molecule. So now we have two oxygen atoms before all together and two oxygen atoms afterwards. Check. And finally, we need to double check. Again, sometimes when you fix one element, you mess up another one. So you always go back to the top of the list and double check. So sodium's here, we've got a grand total of four now, but afterwards we have only two. So you notice, even though we balance the sodiums at the beginning, we have to rebalance them at the end by making another two duplicates. And so now we've checked our sodium and oxygens. We've got two all together at the beginning and two all together at the end. Nice, so when we're all done, we count up our molecules and we have, and we put in our coefficients. So we have two molecules of Na2O, so that's a two. For sodium, single sodium atoms, we have four, so that's a four. And finally, for the oxygen, or the O2, you notice we have one molecule of O2. Again, it's counting how many sets of O2 you have, so that's a one. So our coefficients would be two, four, and one. You may notice that I'm using pencil uh, during this video. That's because oftentimes you have to erase, um, or at least sometimes you have to. And the other thing, I would suggest that you use pencils for that one very reason. The other thing I found is that as much as you're going to hate it, uh, if you mess up, it's often easier just to start from scratch than it is to try to catch a mistake. So just try to do your work carefully. All right, let's do one more example here. So, for this chemical equation, I've already drawn out the circle models, but for before and afterwards, right, we've got two elements. We've got phosphorus and we've got chlorine. Now, at the beginning, there's one phosphorus atom before the reaction and one phosphorus atom after the reaction. So, those check out. But the chlorines are really tricky. We've got two before the reaction and three afterwards. Now, sometimes students get sucked there because they say, I don't know what to duplicate. So here's what I tell them. What's a number that two and three can both go into? Well, six. So I say, go ahead and duplicate molecules until you have six chlorines on each side. So um, that means you can duplicate molecules on both sides. So to get these to six here, I would make two more copies of Cl2. All right, for a total of six. And then I need one more copy of PCl3. All right, again, remember you can duplicate, you must duplicate the entire molecule, right? So now we've got a total of six chlorines before the reaction and a total of six after the reaction. So now our chlorines check out. Are we done? No, of course not, right? 
we have to double check. And wouldn't you know, when we fix those chlorines, we mess up our phosphoruses, right? I've got one at the beginning and now two at the end. So to fix this, we need to make another phosphorus over here, right? We can duplicate that single atom. So now our phosphoruses check out. And our chlorines, we still have six before and after. So those check out. And now we're ready to put in our coefficients. So I have two phosphorus atoms. We have three sets of Cl2. Remember, you're counting molecules, right? So we have three sets of Cl2. And at the end, we have two sets of PCl3. So our coefficients would be two, three, and two. So that's how you balance chemical equations. One more word of caution. Sometimes students, if they don't do their work carefully, they'll end up with what I call a doubled recipe. A doubled recipe is when you put in coefficients that work but are more than what you need. So for instance, in this equation, we have two, three, and two. Now I'm not gonna draw it out, but if you use four, six, and four, it would still work. You could draw out the circle models, it would still be balanced. But the rule is when we write chemical equations, we write it with the smallest coefficients that will work. So um, four, six, four would work, but I would count it wrong. I would count it wrong because you have to use the smallest numbers that will work. So that means if all of the coefficients have a common factor, then you must reduce them down. So if it was four, six, and four, they're all even numbers, so you'd have to reduce them down by a factor of two. All right, just to go through one last example of that, this has a coefficients two, four, and one. Now, two, four, and one don't have any common factors that you could use to reduce them. But if they were four, eight, and two, then you would have what I'd call that doubled recipe and you would have to reduce it back down. This doesn't happen too often, but whenever you balance chemical equations, the coefficients are usually pretty small numbers and you just want to double check to make sure you don't have a doubled recipe or a tripled recipe. So that's it for balancing chemical equations. I hope this helps you understand how they work and I hope you have a wonderful day.